Hey guys, welcome back to Dennis Inscripting Tutorials. <clears throat> it's been a while, but um, decided I'm gonna make a video about the basics of using flags. Um, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm just getting over some sort of cold, so I'll be coughing a lot. I apologize. Um, so we're just gonna kind of get right into it. Um, a flag is on a basic level a um, variable in your script or I guess in Denison that can be saved and the variable can contain information um, and what we're going to cover in this one is just con storing strings which are like sets of letters you know words or sentences or whatever and integers so just numbers um, but they can also store like, objects like player objects and entities and all that fun stuff um, but that'll be the next video on, on flags, that is. Um, so, to give you a very basic idea of what a flag is, I want to show it in action. So, unlike the previous videos, I loaded up Minecraft, and I'm hoping this is working on the recorder. I don't know. But, um, I'm going to use the EX command in Denison, which... All it does is perform a denizen command in the game without a script. So we're going to be using the flag command for right now. And I'm going to flag myself, the player, in this case, with a flag called... Um, example. So right now, this command, if you use it in a script, it just sets a flag on me that's called example. So now if I were to narrate player dot flag example I believe oops sorry gotta get back used to this it says true so the true means that I have a flag called example and so now anywhere in any script you could check for it um, using an if command, you know, if player dot flag example, then narrate I have oops, the flag, and ideally, that, oh, if I don't have any typos, it'll say I have the flag, and that's because in here I said if I if this returns true, which means if I have the flag, then narrate I have the flag. So, that's a very basic example of what a flag is. Um, just as another example, um, we can, we'll set a value to the flag. So, we want to use the flag command, we're going to put it on me again, and we're going to say, um, the name of the flag is value, and then we're going to use a colon to separate so we're going to use a different we'll use example too, and then we're going to use a colon to separate the value from the name of the flag. So the name's over here, and the value will be on this side. In this case, we'll use the value. Um, I don't know. Let's we'll put my name. So I just set myself a flag called example two, and stored in that flag is my name. Um, so then, if I do the example or the yeah, to use the command narrate again, and this time I narrate the player flag example two. You'll notice it says my name because that's what value is stored in the flag. And lastly, just so you can see, if I do another flag on myself, and this will be a number, and we'll store the number one hundred. And then if we go up here, use the same narrate command, except use a number flag, say 100. So that's your very basic example of how to use the flag command and what it does. And real quick, quick we'll um, write up a script here that shows it off. I'm not going to bother uploading the script in the server, but... Um,
so this is the basic interact or assignment interact setup that we've used in every other video. Um, so I'm not going to even bother talking about this. Just keep, I should have had this done already. What can we do with flags? Let's use the example that I did in game and show how it would look in the script. So in this case, we would use the flag command and we'd use the player. Um, I'll explain the different options for that in a little bit, but for now we're just going to be putting them on the player who's interacting with the NPC. In this case, we'll use um, a flag called my name and we'll assign it as Jeeves. Now, this is kind of redundant because you could get my name with a tag, but for the sake of this, we're just using it as a flag example. Um, you only need to do that once in a script. You know, you don't need to. Once a flag is set, it's stored indefinitely unless you were to put a duration in, which will be in the next video. Um, so, from that point, after you've flagged, you can then use any other command. And if you ever need the value in that flag, in the case of like a chat command where you say, hey, um, and then you want to pull my name, so you get the flag from the player, my name, and then when this is executed, it will replace this tag with this value. It's pretty straightforward. Um, can't think of a good simple example off the top of my head. Probably should have planned this out a little bit better. But um this is good for um, storing instances where a player's reached a certain point in the script, done something important. Um, <clears throat> an example of using a flag would be um if you have a listener for them to kill 10 zombies, you know they've killed 10 zombies because you set a flag. We covered that a little bit in the listener tutorial. Um, so you saw, it, you saw us using flags, but you may not have really understood what it was. So you, you're essentially marking the player, on a basic level, you're marking the player so that you can check for that mark later. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make an example script where we're going to have an NPC that stores boats for you at the dock. So when you're sailing across the ocean, you get to the dock, you can give them your boat so you don't lose it. Um, this is just a very basic example so that we have something that explain, or that shows flags in use. Um, so we're going to call this now, we're going to call it Boat Script. Oops, caps lock. up here also and boat aside. Um, I'm not again I'm not gonna bother loading it into the game. Maybe in the next video I'll actually set it up so I can do that more readily. But um for now you'll just we'll just write the script here. Um, so we're gonna use if statements and flags and tags all together here to make NPC that stores your boat. So say you're sailing across the ocean, you get to a dock, you hop out of your boat put it back in your inventory and you click on the NPC who is in charge of storing the boat. Um, so the first thing that that NPC is going to do is check if you have a boat in your hand. So if you have a boat, if um, player.inventory.contains boat, then we want to do some fancy things here. And this is an if statement. We haven't really discussed the specifics of them, but it should make sense as we do this. So if you have a boat in your inventory, you want the NPC to take your boat and then flag you that you have the boat. So you say you want the NPC to do something like chat. Oh, I'll take your boat right now. And then he's gonna, we are going to flag you with <clears throat> a 
flight will flare with boats stored. So you know how many boats are stored. And we're going to use plus plus. So what that's going to do is increase the value of boats stored every time. Now the key here is, if you want to make sure the player has the flag, the flag first. So we're going to use another if statement that says if player dot flag boat stored, which is what I was showing you earlier, but we want it to be the opposite. So if the player doesn't have the flag, because this would return true if they have it and false if they do have it or don't have it. So if they don't have the flag, then we want to flag the player with boats stored. So this is going to be the first time. One. So <clears throat> this first part of the if statement, or the first part of the script, checks if you have a boat. And if you do, it says it's going to take it. It checks if you need, if you're the first time. If it is, then it gives you the flag. Um, and we actually, sorry to make this more complicated than I wanted it to be, we want to make sure, we want to make sure this is at zero. Because it's going to flag it plus one, plus one when it comes down to this command. So, at that point, the script is over. Um, and then we need to add an else, which just means if the player's inventory doesn't contain a boat, we want to get a boat. So, this is going to take another if statement. So we'll check if player.flag boats stored. So we get the value of that flag is greater than 1, or well, I guess it would be greater than 0. Then we want to do this block of code. And let me make this work look right. This needs to be like that. So if it's greater than zero, you want to do this block. And if it's not, you want to do that block. And then in this block here, we are, since we assume that they have a boat stored, you know, you chat. Oh, let me get a boat for you. And then your flag command comes in here because it's going to give a boat. You flag the player boats stored minus minus so it subtracts a boat from their uh, from their flag so now they have one less boat stored and then the else part of this which goes there the else part says if you essentially if you have zero boats you just want the NPC to chat I'm sorry you have no more boats Alright, so that's your basic logic. Um, and then we actually need to add the taking and receiving of the boats. Um, so in this case, if he's taking a boat, you need to add a command. Take I at boat quantity 1. So that's just the basic take command for taking a boat with quantity 1. As you've seen in the chat, or the IRC chat, let me show you the take command. And you take an item and you can set the quantity. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and that happens after the player has interacted with the NPC and it determined that he has a boat. Then over here, after it removes a boat from the flag, you want to give a boat to the player. And that right there is your extremely basic boat storing script. Um, I know it's a little bit of a leap from the previous video, but it should be simple enough to see the logic here. Um, and if you have questions, please ask them in the comments. Um, I may not be articulating this very well, but I think I should that you should see how we're using this flag here to store the quantity of boats in this case so that you can check it at a later time using a tag like this. Um, I did mention earlier that the flag command 
doesn't always have to take the word player. Um, if you wanted to make this a global boat storage so that any player could drop a boat off and pick a boat up, instead of using player, you could use, in your flag command, you could use server. And what that would do, if we change all the instances of that, in this case, if we change all this to server, now, instead of storing this boat stored flag associated to the player, it'll have one flag on the server. So the difference here is if we leave it as player, each individual player that interacts with this NPC is going to have that flag, and their flag values could be completely different from player to player. So I could have five boats, you could have ten, another person could have four. Um, if you set it to server, when you make the flag command, and then when you call it, you use server.flag as opposed to player.flag, then you have one global variable. So every time you're adding or every time you're subtracting, you are removing it from that single global flag as opposed to the individual flags on the player. Similar to server, there is also an NPC option, which will store the flag on the NPC. So you have multiple NPCs with the same script, um, then they could have different values. Um, so in this case, if we were to change all these to NPC instead of server, then each NPC that was collecting boats would have its own supply of boats, as, a, <coughs> as opposed to having one big server supply. Um, and that's the basics of how to use a flag. Um, like I said a second ago, please ask questions if you're confused. I'm, I get all the, the messages sent right to my phone so I can respond even though I'm not making videos very often. Um, I still actively browse YouTube so I have no problem responding. Um, if you need any more help, definitely come into the um, Denison Dev channel on Espernet. It's extremely helpful. Um, and. You know, I showed how to use the bot in a previous video. It's infinitely helpful when you're trying to make scripts like this. So, you know, have fun. Let me know if you need any subjects covered. I think my next video I'm going to try to cover some more complex usage of, of the if statement and flags. Show you how to do lists and such like that. Um, thanks guys. Keep watching.